podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, good enough. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's Advanced Design Lunch and Learn Week webinar. Today, I'm going to be looking at that all-important um, RC design journey. So this is a structural engineer's journey from analysis to design. So before I get started, can I just ask somebody to confirm whether you can hear me okay and also see my screen okay as well? Can you please confirm that in either the chat box or the questions pane? Okay, thank you, Eddie, for that confirmation. So I can see that a number of you have joined, but I'll just allow a couple of more minutes to allow um, those who have registered to give them the chance to join, and then we'll get started. Okay, so I'll resume in a few minutes.
Okay, so welcome to those of you who've just joined. Um, today, as part of the Advanced Design Lunch and Learn Week, we're going to be looking at uh, reinforced concrete design in advanced design. So I'll be taking you on that all important journey as we go from analysis to design. So a little bit about myself. My name is Jimmy Aldida, and I'm one of the application engineers here um, at Greytech. So I cover all the structural products in the simulated part of the business. So that involves advanced design, idea statica, the BIM designers modules, and also robot structural analysis. So aside from providing you guys with the latest content, such as these webinars, I'm also responsible for training, technical supports, and also providing demonstrations of our products and services. So prior to joining Grey Tech, I worked as a structural engineer for several years in the industry. My experience ranges from retail to residential to commercial. And I've designed a variety of structures from very simple structures to the most complex as well. And I've designed in a variety of materials such as steel, concrete, timber and masonry as well. So you'll have a copy of this handout, which is also available. Um, attached to these uh, to this session uh, make sure you download a copy of this handout um, here you'll see a breakdown of what I'm going through today and you also have direct links um, to contact me so you can reach me on LinkedIn and also you can send me an email with any questions that you may have so I have um, added those links into this handout so this webinar will be recorded and then it will be made available on site um, online um, on our Grey Tech Content Center. So here is uh, where we add all our latest information. And our page here contains some of the best practices um, recommended by our experts. And also we share with you some tips and tricks, and that could be either for modeling or analysis or um, anything in general related to workflows. So please allow up to two weeks for us to add this webinar to the Grey Tech Content Center. So an overview of where, what we'll be looking at today. So to start with, I'll be going through um, going through that journey, so outlining the uh, these steps along the way, and then I'll have a look at showing you um, this uh, this journey live um, in advanced design, where we'll start off with looking at the um, settings for the concrete structure, so defining our um, advanced design um, parameters for the reinforced concrete design, and then we'll move on to the analysis and have a look at some of the FEM results before we can then look to carry those members through to uh, the RC design module. And to finish off with, we'll have a look at um, generating those reinforcement drawings and the reports, which are crucial for um, any project. So I can see a question from Ashley Whitten. So he sees he says there seems to be an issue with the handout download for RC Design. Okay. Um, so I can what I can do Ashley is I can re-upload this handout uh, after the session finishes. If anyone else is having these problems, can you also please confirm? Um, what I'll do at the end of the session, I'll uh, upload this handout once again. Um, and then you should be able to download that from there. So I hope you guys all enjoyed today's session and hopefully there'll be something, some gems for you guys to take away um, for that journey. So it's time to get started now. So now what does that journey look like? So that involves us going from modeling right the way through to being able to um, design the RC element and then finally being able to export that through back to Revit. So to start with, you'd either, you generate your model in advanced design, um, either from scratch, or you can look at uh, um, importing it in from, uh, from Revit or a DXF or an IFC file. And then we'd look to bring that model up to scratch in terms of uh, adding the structural aspects to this, so applying your loadings and your combinations. Then you can of course, design the uh, concrete members using the um, RC design module. Um, but before 
we design that module, you need to make sure that we define our design and analysis settings. So that could be for individual members and also the analysis as a whole. Then we can look at our results and then take them through, um, open them with that uh, integrated design module, or we can use the standalone um, design modules. Once we've designed our member, we can then generate reports and also drawings, so they can be in DWG or PDF format. Once we've finished, we can choose to update our main global model with these changes, and that will then ensure that that model then includes those design members. From there, we can then look at exporting it back to Revit for our detailer or the technician to then um, amend those uh, reinforcement cages or even generate some further drawings. So now let's talk, let's get started with this journey. Let's start this journey now. Okay, so what does that look like? So here I have a, a multi-story concrete structure that you can see on screen. So this consists of columns, beams, um, also shear walls as well. And you can see I've got a variety of loads on here. Here's our concrete structure. So with this example, I will uh, show you the design of um, a few of these members. So if you remember from the overview session, we looked at uh, the design of a beam, just a very brief overview of a beam. In this session, I'll look at a few more of those members with the design modules. So to start with, so here's our model. We need to define our settings. Yeah? So we will define our reinforced design settings. It's very easy to select members here and filter them and also choose the right um, members. So on the right hand side of the properties here, you can see we've, we've made it very easy for you to access these properties. So it's all in one place. And here is where you would define your concrete parameters. So your cover, um, the type of checks you want to carry out for the design, so that could be your shear force, um, your cracking, um, also your buckling. So all of these design settings are found here. So I'll just zoom in here in a second so you can see these a little bit better. Okay, so here we are. The concrete design. Okay, so ductility class, all your class A, B, or Cs. And then we've got our concrete cover. So you can define your cover here. You can also to change these settings for, for the cover and the ductility class. These settings can be changed from within the design module as well. So the crack width is very important. At the moment it's set to an automatic uh, 0.3, but you can impose a value on this. So what it will make sure is you can also enable the correction of the cracking. So that makes sure, makes sure that, uh, that the crack widths aren't exceeded. Um, so they don't go over that 0.3 millimeters you'll automatically adjust that reinforcement to make sure that uh, the crack widths stop at 0.3 millimeters. You also have option for fire verification. Um, and you also, you can see some settings here for your reinforced modification, a rib design. So sometimes if you want to design a slab and you have a downstand beam, and you want to consider a rib sometimes, that can give you very accurate analysis. So you can use the rib design for that. You also have some um, buckling lengths and also a punching shear verification. So back over to the main model now. So these are the settings we looked at for the beam. You can also obviously define your settings for your columns and your slabs as well. So time to head over now on to the analysis settings. So here for the analysis settings or the design settings, you see you can see a series of settings here. So these are the settings for the calculation as a whole. What that calculation sequence looks like, what that involves. So you've got your creep and shrinkage there, your number of bars and maximum diameters, column calculation. Okay, so we have we have also got uh, the reinforcement, the stock lengths, what to include in the calculation. And also fabrics. The calculation sequence, again, you get to choose what that sequence looks like. So we also have the capacity design that you can see on there. So auto design uh, reinforcement for the columns. So what that does is it ensures that your 
if in the event of a structure failing, that the columns won't be the first to fail. So make sure the columns have that extra capacity to deal with that. And you can also select the reinforcement joins to be saved as a, a DXF as well. So time to now open the um, model with the results. So I've already created an analysis on this model. Now here, I would like to just switch to a view where we can see the outline of the members a little bit easier. I always like to add a transparent look so we can see uh, a better integration, a smoother representation of the results against the um, contours of the elements there. For the results, let's have a look on the displacements here. Okay, so we're looking at uh, a ULS combination. So let's pick one of seven. Here we can see a maximum of nine millimeters. Oh yes, and here we have the animation. Here we can see how that structure is behaving generally with relation to the uh, global axes. You can see the movement in the general direction there as well. And now for some, now time for some forces. So we can start with some uh, shear forces there, and the slabs, and also the beams. Okay, so you can see. Maximum around 720 kilonewtons. It's, uh, now we can also add values to the result. So we can see the numbers on there. In this case, I want to show just the minimum and maximum. So I will turn off the, the intermediate values just so the drawing is not as busy. Okay, so now from the slider scale, I can choose to increase the size of these uh, minimum and maximums. There we go. Um, we can also have a look at uh, some moments now as well. Okay, so we need to make sure we select the same type of result for both planar and linear elements. Okay, so these are the sort of numbers that we're going to be designing our elements for. So they need to be able to obviously resist these forces. Um, what else do we have? So mode. So here. Here is something where you can look at how this uh, I've got modal analysis on the structure, and you can see how it behaves at each mode, uh, each interval relative to the um, vibration of the frequency. So here I've picked a, a mode at the start, 0.4 seconds in, and it's about you can see two and a half hertz at this point here. Yeah, and you can also see a pulse. So again, it's very, um, very handy to have a look at that to see how it's if you have any vibrating machinery. Or you need to carry out modal analysis. So now let's have a look at another mode. Okay, so as we go make our way down the list of modes, you can see that that frequency is increasing as we get to the end. Yeah. And I've now also just have a look at the, the animation as well. So the animation will show you how it varies at each point. So it looks quite distorted there. Um, it always looks um, worse on the on the simulation than, than in real life. Okay, so you can see it's moving along the Y plane there for that to mode, mode 20. So now we've, uh, that frequency has increased, gone up to 21 hertz. And now that movement is uh, predominantly in the in the Z direction there. Vertical movement there. Mode 28, one of the modes at the end. Again, now we're all the way up to 85 hertz. So from the animation, that movement now has made its way down to the columns for that mode. Okay. I'll just pick one or two more so you can see how that differs. Okay, so from the beginning, you can see that, that move started off for those beginning modes. On the right hand side, we have our RC design results. So these are the important results that we want. And we want to be able to look at. Uh, the required reinforcement, the provided reinforcement, um, your deflections and your crack widths. Okay, so before we go to design our members, it's important that we we have a look at uh, what these values look like, so we know what we're up against. So the reinforcement in the y direction I've chosen here for the columns. We're looking at around 225 millimeters squared, and this is the um, um, in the Z, for AZ. Again, this is required AS. Now let's have a look at the slabs. So in conjunction with that is with the columns, so just turn off the columns there. So the slabs, 
obviously we're expecting more reinforcement. So you can see for the bottom slab at the moment, I think I've got some reinforcement at the top there. You can also see some peak zones. The bottom slab you can see is 3,500 millimeters square meter. Okay, and on the X direction in the bottom of the slabs, that's what they look like. I always like to display the mesh with the reinforcement. So you can see um, where those peak zones lie. Now obviously we can see peak points here. We also have the option to um, to, to uh, smooth those values at peak. Okay, so um, we have an option to smooth those values to make sure that uh, we don't get any outliers and resulting then in over design reinforcement. So that is something during the modeling phase is to consider a smooth uh, peak smoothing zone around the column. So here you can see this earlier on this model. I've added some reinforcement to the top two slabs. So the green is the general reinforcement, red area shows the additional that I provided. So in general, here you can see that uh, obviously the on floors uh, from the ground floor um, up to the third floor, the first or third, I need to provide reinforcement, yet to provide reinforcement slabs for that. Okay, so now let's have a look at uh, some concrete deflections. There may not be any results with this one because I did enable deflections in the settings so that, yeah, the beams. Okay, so um, let's have a look at the slabs. I did enable deflection for that. And here we can see maximum of around 1.7 millimeters, and then on the other side, on the other end is 10.5. So for cracking, crack widths here. Okay, so let's have a look at those crack widths. We're expecting to see that crack width limited to a 0.3. So there we go. You can see in any case here, it doesn't exceed that 0.3. Okay, so it's uh, corrected those crack widths to make sure that they don't exceed uh, 0.3. And some design efforts. Always important to have a look at what these moments are and what, we, what our reinforcement needs to be able to resist. You've also got your concrete and uh, steel stresses there and your capacity design as well. So there we have little bits of the FEM results and the concrete design results. Now let's go ahead and open this column with the design module. So again, you can open this within the integrated design module or we can launch it uh, um, from the standalone module. So here I have a column which uh, with reinforcements already being calculated. So I'll pick a column which is um, almost blank okay so it's just geometrically there with the fem results but we need to then add reinforcement to that so let's open a different one here we are so you can see how the three viewports are arranged here so you've got three really interactive view um, you've also got an elevation with all the forces so these are the forces uh, which it uh, will be designed for okay 3d interactive view there nice feature to have and also a, a section, cross section. Then I want to be able to, from the geometry, define my setting. So here it's uh, carried across 300 millimeters from the main model, but uh, I can update that. So I'm just going to increase this to a 400 square. And then let's uh, amend the height. So let's, for example, say 3.5 meters. So again, you get the best of both worlds here. So you've defined, you've analyzed the model globally. And then you've got individual member design in here. Here's your settings for the buckling length. So you can choose the type of buckling. So in this case, on the left hand side, um, on the left hand side, you can see that I have um, a series of members there. Yeah? From there, you can either design individually or we can choose to group these elements. So then we'll design the worst case in that group. So, for example, we could have the worst case column design if you wanted, or the worst case beam. So here, we have the general design assumptions, so all your ductility class, um, your concrete cover, and uh, then also you can change your fire resistance as well. So I'll add in, maybe let's go for an hour. So an hour fire resistance. Okay. Over to the reinforced concrete section here, we can choose a class. So I might choose to go up to uh, C3545 here. Ductility class, probably B or C, let's say. 
Um, and you also get control of your load duration there. Concrete covers. Again, we saw earlier, um, one, of the, one of the steps was to define the concrete settings in the parameters and the property section. Here we can change those settings again if we wanted to. So there are design settings in the geometry. And now for the reinforcement diameters. So it won't consider anything that's uh, H6, 16 or 50 millimeter diameter, as you can see from there. Main reinforcement settings. This is very important to go through this. Yeah? So here you get to choose um, exactly the how that reinforcement looks. So we can add in starter bars as well if we want it at the top or bottom. At the moment, it's looking at general settings for the longitudinal reinforcement. Okay. Um, wide hooks as well. Yeah. So let's have a look at the transversal reinforcement. So minimum diameter, I can go up to 10 millimeters if I wanted, or eight, go back to that, and you get to choose the type of hook as well. You can also define uniform spacing if you wanted, but at, uh, I've just increased that minimum spacing just for the sake of making some changes here. Uniform spacing. Or if not, it will calculate based on um, a series of packages for uh, the uh, reinforcement along the length of that beam. So now the starter bars. So we have different types of starter bars here. You have main bars, secondary bars as well. So if you have, if you're connecting to a slab, it's sometimes important we need to define those starter bars as well. In some cases, we may need shaped starter bars and also top hooks. So you can also choose your lap lengths as well for those uh, um, starter bars. Okay, transversal bars again in uh, for the um, uh, for the links of the uh, transverse reinforcement. Okay, so you can provide them in the top or the bottom, or both of those, and also the spacing and diameter. We can choose what that looks like. Again, in some cases. Uh, similar to the top starter bars, we've also got the option for uh, bottom starter bars. So I'll change the bottom starter bars. And now I want to have a look at the combinations. So for the combinations here, these are the forces that we are designing against. Okay, so these are the ones we're up against from, uh, from our main model, top and bottom loads. So it's very important to see where they come from. Okay, so you can see the dead load. It's, uh, it's giving you the worst case loads. And now it's very simply a case of calculating. So when I choose to calculate them, I remember it will assign, it will start off with some reinforcement uh, as a starting point. You can choose to accept this. And from this point, then you can amend the reinforcement. So here, if you remember, I selected, um, I changed some diameter for the uh, reinforcement. So in this case, it's uh, gone for 20 millimeter bars, so H20s are the main bars. Okay, let's have a look at some of those results now. So what, uh, what are we doing? So we can look at the views here as well. So it's important also to be able to visualize what that uh, reinforcement looks like. Yeah, so we know exactly what we specified, whether it's real um, and how, how that's arranged. So you can see very detailed views here. You can see what that lap length looks like. That we might need to increase that. It looks a bit short to me between the additional secondary bars there, just in the top of that column. And these are the, uh, the, the stirrups or the links, tying all our bars together. Right, so back over to um, the views here. We've also got a section view, okay. Now, for the results here, you can see that uh, the the longitudinal the main bars are working very hard, so they they are almost close to failure. So we need to, in this case, I'd need to amend those bars to introduce additional reinforcement. Yes, yeah? so the minimum the AS required is still higher than provided in this case. Yeah, so you can see the real is just only just over than the required. You can see only by eight millimeters, so it's very, very close. So ideally we'd like to probably see this go down to 80%, but I might not go down just a bit further. So to do that, I can go then into the my reinforcement settings. 
Okay. Um, we can change our um, settings from there. Or now, if I go into the main bars, okay, here I'll find some settings for the main reinforcements. So main bars is going for um, three bars in both directions, range 20. Okay, I can either change these to four, or I can provide additional bars. Yeah, so I can provide a second, uh, secondary bars. Yeah, so we can provide additional three by three. Yeah, so three additional bars in each direction. I'm just going to clear this calculation for this, just so you, here you can see what that looks like. So let's add in two additional bars um, in in those directions, so you can see what that looks like. And so you can see what that there, that is what that uh, utilization looks like. Yeah, it's so eight, eight, 16 plus some 12, so it gives you a guideline there. So these are the uh, starter bars. So we'll just click OK to that. That's what it's calculated. And that's what it's uh, here. Right, so it's provided basically now we've gone up from three by three to uh, five bars by five bars. Yeah, so in this case, I'd rather increase the diameter of the bars um, than increase the number of bars. Okay, so what we can do is go back then um, to calculate this quickly, we'll just see the results. So, so restore reinforcement there. Okay, um, you can always choose restore reinforcement. So if you've made any changes, you can restore it to its uh, original state where it calculated. So you can see longitudinal main reinforcement, main bars. Let's uh, increase this to four number H25s. We should see that drop down considerably now. Yeah, that's definitely going to help it. So I click apply. Okay, so we've gone from three H20s now to four H25s. Maybe over design, perhaps. Um, so here you can see in the results that we're now at a ratio of around 42%. Yeah. So we're looking at uh, provided 3770 millimeter squared against that 1600. So provided more than double what's provided there. Um, interaction curves this is an important one as well to see what that relationship looks like between um, your, your moments, um, all that presented graphically. So if we have a look at the diagram, so here you can see your, your moments against your shears and uh, your uh, actual forces, okay? Interactive drawing. So now we want to be able to, we've gone, to, we've designed that element, okay? So we've gone through the reinforcement, and now we want to be able to generate those drawings. So here you can see it generates um, a, a sheet, to, uh, a starting point basically for the sheet. You can rearrange your views on there. Um, also, you can uh, rescale them to a suitable scale, what, what works best for you. Okay. Um, and then I'm just going to restore the uh, layout just to go back to the previous view. Okay, um, here are my sections. So, very interesting to see what that looks like. So, it's interesting. What it's done is the reinforcement drawing's gone back to the three by three, but I hadn't updated the drawings there. So, if you update the drawings, I would see those uh, the 4H25s. So, I can also save this as DWG. So, now I want to save this as a uh, DWG so I can open that with, uh, with AutoCAD and then I can. Um, customize that drawing, and make any changes to it. So while that's loading, while I've saved that, let's have a now look at the report. So it's very important now for me to be able to get these numbers out of the design. So I'm looking for very simple reports. So it's very easy to use here. So these are my the contents in my report, and I have several different levels of reports. So time now to generate my report and take a look at uh, what those, how those uh, numbers and that information is presented. So I'm going to generate that report. So let's generate that report. So you can see it's being generated. I chose to generate this in Microsoft Word. So you can also generate it as a PDF. So now here is uh, my report in Microsoft Word. 
And now at this point here, I can customize these uh, these calculations. Fully customizable. Um, yeah, I can change the font, add uh, change the layout, add additional uh, calculations and numbers in as well. This is very easy presented in tabular format. So this is a very concise report. If I wanted to, I could um, uh, generate a more uh, complex report with uh, with all the references to the euro codes as well. So it's very easy for an independent check, independent checker. Then uh, now I'm interested in having a look at that drawing in AutoCAD. <coughs> so I'm nearing the end of my journey here with this column. I want to see what that uh, AutoCAD drawing looks like. So here's my drawing in AutoCAD. So you can see that information is being carried across through to um, a DWG. I can now make changes to my column here if I want. So I've got my total weight there as well, my um, assumptions there, and my bar schedule. Okay, so ideally I'd like to put this bar schedule on a separate sheet so I can ha I can add um, a layout for that and just uh, arrange the bar schedule and the viewports for that. So now back over to the main model. So now from here you can see that uh, once I've um, once I'm happy with my design, I can choose to click and up. Okay. So from clicking and updating all, that uh, that will allow me then to um, update everything. Okay. And at the same time, I can open um, other members as well from uh, the design library here. So I can switch from that column to say a slab. Here I have an example of a slab. So the slab model is relatively new. Yeah. So we've just uh, extended the abilities here. And I can go back to that beam. So what I'll do now is I'll show you an example of a slab in, on a more simpler model. So that's just a little bit of a, a better model I'd like to show you one. So I'll close and update all. I can update all the sections here. So we'll now make sure that uh, that column which I've designed, it will update the um, enforcement settings for that. So if I were to, have, were to have a look at the results here at this point, the provider reinforcement, you'd see the new results. So over to the slab which I mentioned. Okay, so so now here is a very simple structure. Over into my analysis model. Okay, let's just change this view. And turn off the mesh. Okay. Now let's open this with the design modules. Ah, excellent. So I'm greeted, greeted by two views here, a plan view and a 3D view. So I want to have a look at the reinforcement diagram. So I have reinforcement diagram, reinforcement cage, and then a combination of the two. So at the moment, I haven't generated any reinforcement. So that's why I could see anything for reinforcement cage. Um, here I would like to show you there's two methods, so FEM or strips. I usually like to design using the strips based method. So I'm sure some, some of you prefer that. So let's go with the strip method. I find this this um, a quicker way or sometimes a simpler approach to the design. I have a series of strips already generated there previously. So I've cleared my strips now. And you can see here I've got a set of results, so represented by the isolines. I'm looking at dead load at the moment, so let's look at a ULS combination, 108. Let's choose that and uh, have a look at some of the forces here from design events. And let's switch just the major direction, so we'll uh, generate our strips here. So that's the, uh, the forces, FXX. From the geometry, here I have all my geometry and I can add in openings to the slab as well. So the slab openings, if I have any openings which are in my original Revit model, they will be carried through to this. You can then add in additional openings as well and send it back over to Revit to for, for that detailing. There's my reinforcement diameters, reinforcement settings. So I've chosen strip base <coughs> for the solutions top and bottom. I can choose minimum minimum coverage. So you can change that to 80 if I wanted as a minimum. And for 
the second layer is only 30, so we don't really want to go over right? Uh, parameters, minimum diameter, I'll just increase this to 10, and the maximum will go up to, say, <clears throat> 16. Okay, so that's been carried through to the top and bottom in both directions. Let's apply it, and now, move my way across the, um, um, now I can look at the, uh, generating the strips. So I can either add a strip in manually. So here I'm going to draw a uh, generator strip from end to end in the major direction. Okay. Yeah, so I've just simply created a strip here. Also, it has a predefined width, which you can change. Um, here I've just dragged that uh, out further to widen that strip. And now let's see how the, what the moments look like on that strip. And now I can very easily see uh, each of the type of forces for that particular strip, see what they look like. And that's in general. And the other option I have is I can clear that and I can generate an automatic set of strips. So if I select all, I've selected all strips in both directions, so it's generated a series of strips um, in both major, major and minor direction in both the, sorry, the major and the minor directions. So here we have the strips in both directions. So let's just split that down to major and minor. So these are a little bit wider than what I provided originally for that example I showed you. I can also change the width of these if I wanted. I can narrow one of these down and add an additional strip in between as well. Okay, so there's my strip generation there. And now I'm ready to calculate this slab. So let's calculate this and see what sort of uh, reinforcement case that returns us. So I'm expecting to see some, some reinforcement diagrams here. So here is uh, the provided against required AS for each of those strips. And if I switch to a singular view, so strip one, okay, the minor direction. Here we can see provided against required. Let's switch to another strip, so strip three. Okay, so there we can see what that looks like. And I also have an option to look at delta, so the the difference in reinforcement, how much additional or how much over I provide, how much I've gone over the provided, uh, sorry, the required. So the difference between provided and the required. It's okay, so nothing there. Reinforcement zones. So I now have a series of reinforcement zones. So I'm looking at the major dot minor direction there. Here's the um, the major direction. And I can see the layout of the rebar there. And I can add in at this point, add in a series of uh, bars, individual zones for the bars. Okay, so if I have any any peak areas which I need to cover, I can add in an additional area um, with reinforcement to cover that. In the model, now I have a lovely cage, reinforcement cage that I can look at with arrangement. It's very nice to see this uh, um, in generate, see how everything uh, is arranged. So we've got some additional bars there for that area. Very nice. Right, so let's look at this edge here. Okay, so here we've got some warnings as well. So it's saying that, uh, um, just look at this view first and show you the warnings, the plan view. So over in that warning section, you can see that uh, some of the bottom reinforcement is not enough to cover the imposed reinforcement. So you can see what that looks like here. Yeah. So if I wanted to, I could um, go back into that uh, the reinforcement, um, enter those strips, rather all the settings. So I can go I either add in an additional strip, or if I go or add in a sorry a layer, a layer of additional bars. Um, equally, I can go into the reinforcement settings here. Where I had a minimum and maximum diameter, I can increase the diameter of those bars as well. And then I've also got the option for the coverage as well. 
where I had uh, area of coverage, I could increase that as well. There's a lot of things I could do here. I could bring them in at closer centers, in obviously increase now the diameter of my bars, increase, add in additional um, bars over that area, localized area, if it is a case of that. Um, so I've gone, I've just increased the, the diameter here. I'm still, hope, I'm still thinking, I'll probably see that, uh, yeah, I, can, I still need to revisit that just to bring that up to scratch, make sure I've got enough reinforcement in the bottom. So very easy to uh, amend your design and you know exactly um, what to do through those warnings there. So over the interactive drawing now. Again, this is very similar to the column I was looking at. So I've got uh, two sheets here in this case because I have uh, top and bottom reinforcement. Namely, let's. I'm just going to increase the scale of this so I can zoom in and see a little bit better the number of bars and the range which uh, they apply to. So we have there we go, 10 millimeter diameter bars, 250 centers in that range. So a few crashes, a few clashes there. Okay, and the bar schedules. We've got two bar schedules there. Right, so back over to the sheet and let's save this as a DWG. So I'm nearing uh, the end of this journey here, so time to save this as a DWG. Let's save that there. Again, the report is very similar to, to the columns as well. So in this case, the slab report is usually a lot simpler. Okay, depending on what you choose. So if it was a FEM-based method, you probably have a little bit of a more complicated um, report with more information there, but we've gone for strips-based. So it'll probably show me a summary of uh, of the strips and uh, the reinforcement uh, in those strips there. So uh, here's my report. It's only about seven pages long. So we can see my strips in both directions, materials, concrete covers, and the warnings and errors which I uh, need to correct. So hopefully that drawing should have loaded by now on the, on the audit code. If not, let's just open it up again. Okay, there we go. Let's pan in. And here is my drawing in AutoCAD. Okay, so I'm ready to make changes to this drawing in AutoCAD and customize it, adapt it to what I need. So equally what I can do now at this part to this point is close an update with this reinforcement. Okay, so I can go to close all and update, it'll update that slab and it will uh, carry it through to the main model. From that point, I can then send that across, uh, export that to um, Revit. Okay, so I'll export that as a GTCX for detailing in Revit. So through our power pack, you've got that bi-directional link. Yeah? So you've got the same um, basic design tools there as well, but you've got a set of additional detailing tools with that power pack in Revit. So that uh, my technician or I can then um, amend those reinforcement cages that we saw they will be carried through i can amend that in auto in revit uh, refine that to um, re refine and change those uh, design uh, reinforcement cages to what i need so do we have any questions at this point so i'll just uh, uh give you a minute or two to um post any questions that you have please post these in the questions box and uh, I'll be happy to pick these up. I will also add in my email address once again into the chat box for everyone. If you have any questions that uh, you can get you come up with at the end of this uh, uh, webinar, please make sure you send those across and I'll be more than happy to pick up those questions for you. So I've come to the end of that journey here. I have a very quick overview of what that journey looks like. And I can see some questions in the, in the questions pane. Okay, so probably a couple of you saying you can't access the handouts. Yes, I will uh, uh, re-upload that handout. <clears throat> so Ashraf says, 
where is the crack width calculated relevant to the section height? To the surface or 40 millimeters from the surface, etc. And is it possible to adjust where it's calculated? Okay, so when we saw with the um, the FEM results, um, you with the with the results where I saw the crack widths, you can see where those crack widths are. Okay, so I can turn on the numbering and turn on the mesh, and that will let me see where that uh, crack widths crack width is. So with that numbering turned on, you'll see where those are exactly in which location. Um, but where is it generally calculated relevant to the section height? Okay, so this is something which uh, you can adjust from the properties. So from the properties section, which I saw earlier with the crack widths, that's something which you can define define in there. Is it possible to adjust where it's calculated? Um, generally, I suppose it uh, you have you, it's calculated in um, both directions in the top, and you can also see in the bottom as well. So it will generally calculate it uh, um, in those in those areas. So it should cover all the scenarios where it's calculated. But it's just a case of then viewing the results for that particular area, which where you want to see it, whether that's in the top or the bottom, or the x direction or the y direction. So I hope that answers your question, Ashraf. Um, so. I can't see any more questions uh, after that. Okay, so that uh, brings me to the end of the webinar. Before we go away, I'd just like to remind you what else we have planned for tomorrow. So coming up, for tomorrow, as part of Lunch and Learn Friday, I'll be finishing off the Lunch and Learn week with templates. So advanced design templates are essential for you to be able to increase your pro productivity. Okay, so that's a structural engineer's perspective on increasing producti productivity um, with your projects. So please make sure you, see, you tune in again tomorrow at the same time, where I will share with you those golden templates to help you save time during your projects. So thank you for watching. And um, please make sure to follow us on social media. I always say please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So the more the merrier. Um, the more of those pages you visit, the more of that content, uh, more access you have content, the more information you can soak in. So we have uh, all the latest tutorials, tips and tricks, latest news offers, and also um, events. So thank you once again. Thanks for joining me today. And uh, it's bye from me for now. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Bye for now.